Hello and welcome to another episode here, Big Man in the Woods. My name is Mark, your online scout leader, helping you deliver more practice skills and skills for life. Now in this vlog, it's all about a Q&A session, okay? Questions and answers that you guys have asked me. Maybe it's about uh, scouts, it's, maybe it's about cooking. There's a whole load of random questions that you guys have asked me. So thank you very much for sending all those questions via YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Now. I'm trialing a new kind of vlog on this one, right? Okay, so I've got two camera setups. I'm not sure if it's gonna work. So I'd like to know uh, if you like this uh, camera action and this camera action here. So I've got two cameras on the go. I'm just kind of editing around. So I'm a bit, I'm a bit hyped up. Uh, it's been quite exciting uh, trying to set out these new two cameras. So we'll see how it goes. And if you don't like it and you just prefer this front one, then we'll just stay in the front one, all right? So, uh, thank you very much for all those questions. I've got them all printed out here. Uh, quite a few to go through, but we'll we'll go through them and see how I answer them. Some of them I can answer them. Some of them I honestly say I can't answer them, but hey, we don't know everything. So, first question from David Little. Thanks, David. Um, how do I get involved in my district or county team? That's a good question. Um, bit of a tricky one as well. Um, Obviously, the district one, straightforward, contacting your uh, district commissioner, raising their awareness that you want to join the district team for whatever role you want to do. Uh, maybe you want to join the, the district kind of leaders team and maybe become the, the, the district scout leader, or maybe you just want to sit on the district uh, exec board and make those decisions. There's a few roles to do on the district team, and that kind of pans out into the county role okay so the county role you would obviously contact your county commissioner um, and then go from there so my county role i've joined the training team i'm on the first response uh, team and i'm um, doing some of the media stuff for them uh, my county is greater london middlesex west um, and on the district team they've asked me so many times um, to come and join them but because of my roles um, and because of my my job and my family it's really hard to commit all that time and um, so they uh, they're trying to persuade me to get on the district team hundreds of times a district commissioner <laughs> no quoting amy winehouse i said no 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 um i don't have the time to commit to be the dc you know i want to do the role properly um and with work, with a family, my scouts, big man of words, I just don't have the time. Um, but I'm going to become the district, something on the district at some point in 2021. So, uh, David, to answer your question, contact your district commissioner um, to become uh, to join the district team and the county commissioner to join the county. Does that make sense? I'm rambling today. Uh, thank you very much. Awesome. Uh, Richard Marple asked me, what's the most usual... What's the most useful non-camping piece of equipment that I take camping or the most obscure? Now, I've been thinking about that one, Richard. <sighs> hmm. I don't know. I think what you learn, isn't it, is to minimize your equipment. Okay, so every bit of equipment that you take has a purpose and maybe has a few purposes um, that doubles up doing different things, isn't it? Uh, and knowledge means less equipment, so they say. Hmm. I don't know. Like, I do get sent stuff to review. Lots of kit. You know, for instance, let's just have a look over here. You know, the pop-up lantern. <laughs> uh, it's a solo lantern that popped up and then I'm like, I don't know. I just take my normal lantern. So there are lots of gadgets and gizmos that are on the on the scene that you can buy. You know, another one, very random. Um... Check this one out, guys. Let's see. Can you see this one? It's uh, poo in the bag. Bag. Basically, uh, if you haven't got a toilet, um, you can poo in the bag and then bury it, and it's biodegradable uh, instead of just <coughs> squatting over a hole. Uh, that doesn't really answer your question, does it, <coughs> Richard? Because I try not to. I try not to take stuff that I'm not going to use. You know. Every time I go camping, I go back um, over my kit and, and work out what did I use, what did I pack that I didn't use. And I kind of now got it down to a semi idea. I always pack too much, but uh, it is what it is. So I don't really take any 
gadgets that aren't really useful. Hmm. Just looking around in here. <laughs> uh, Jaffa cakes. I always actually, I always take a second um, mug of, because there's always some scout leader uh, forgets their mug. So we know a brew is very important. Talking about brews, um, Claire, she asked me how to make a brew on camp and why is it important? Well, you know I love my brew, okay? Oh, and a brew for me is, is is a few things. The few things why I love a cup of tea. Like the first thing in the morning is just that kind of pick me up, uh, get me started, um, and hydration. Yeah, so we know on cap it's really difficult to get the scouts and the young people to keep drinking. We have to remind them all the time. Make sure you've you've had your juice or whatever, uh, or your hot chocolate before bed or whatever. Uh, so that's one reason, hydration. But the second for me, is a brew is about socializing so you'll find like even at work isn't it people will, will pop up in the in a staff canteen and have a brew and have a chit chat and it's a bit like having a cap, uh, campfire cup of tea you just sit have 10 15 minutes out and then you just talk to the leaders about how the camp's going or whatever so for me a brew is two things you know obviously it's the fluid and, and hydration but secondly that socializing it's like sitting around the campfire isn't it having a cuppa uh, and just putting the walls to rights you know i've said it a few times here i'm not the biggest drinker so while my other mates are you know having a port or whatever i don't mind it every now and then but i would much prefer having a cuppa around the campfire uh, or hot chocolate or something and just putting the world to rights in it so claire i hope that answers your question um Where's the other question? There was another question about tea. Uh, so Michael asked me this, more or less the same, what is the best drink for a campfire? Uh, for me personally, it's a cup of tea, in particularly Yorkshire biscuit tea. And that answers your question. Um, Dinosaur, he asked me, what is the best kind of tea? Uh, mine is Yorkshire biscuit. Oh man, that is beautiful. And I've just, just finished it, it's empty. Um, so Michael, what is the best drink for the campfire? So around the campfire in the evening, uh, let's say that there's no young people, because if there's a young people, it is a definite um, no alcohol camp. Ooh, the lights are just falling down. Bear with me. That was a bit strange. <laughs> Where was I? Uh, yes, um, if there's young people, it is a complete blanket ban on all alcohol okay um i know some scout leaders will one or two might have a little bevy um while the young people are in bed and there's some scout leaders who are on on duty as such you can do that um but me as my whole role as a scout leader from from starting we've always had a blanket on alcohol like no it's just not worth it okay so in this instance let's talk about gilwa reunion um it's an adult scout only uh camp there's only adults um my my choice again honestly would be a brew cup of tea i d i am partial to some cider or when we're with the bush scout boys and girls um it's it's a port and the guys have introduced me to port <laughs> so i only have port when i'm with the bush scouts uh, so bush scout guys they would definitely say port but for me you know the answer it's a cup of tea a good question from Mo. How do you do backwards Christmas dinner? That's what our scouts want uh, for December activity day. Uh, we're debating wrapping and cooking in colds versus a Dutch oven. Do you know, Mo, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know. I really don't know. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask the guys over at Bush Scout. Um, I'm sure they will know the answer to this. And then I'll come back, okay? I'm going to get it, the Bush Scout guys to, to um, explain it a bit more because... Honestly, I don't know. And it's okay to say, I don't know. So, Mo, sorry, I'm, I'm gonna pass the buck to the bush scout. So Stevens asked me the sale of down campsite. It's a hot potato, um, but what are my thoughts? He, he was there in the 70s. So uh, Stephen, honestly, I've never been to down campsite, so I have no personal or, or feelings with it or connections with it at all. Um, I, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Gilwell Park, the Scout Association, need to raise some funds. I don't know how they've worked out to sell down campsite, to be honest with you. They've, they must have looked at finances and the running costs. We know it's quite expensive. And 
I don't know what how they've come up with down to be honest, but they've sent they're selling off down campsites. So let's look at it. If they sell it off, um, they're going to raise some money for the finance of scouting for the future, which. As we all know, uh, TSA are desperate for some um, money for the difficulties that they're in. Uh, man, it's a it's a real, real hot one, isn't it? As you said, it's a hot potato. I don't have any connections with Down. So for me, it's like, okay, if that's going to raise some money, that's a great thing. Uh, hopefully, it will continue as some sort of activity center, maybe run from another company like um, Longridge. Uh, I went. That was my first ever camp, actually, and that's now sold on to a private company that still run camping activities, and you can go and camp there. So maybe down could be run like that. I don't know. I know there's lots of people trying to raise money and GoFundMe and that kind of thing. Uh, but Stephen, I'm really sorry. I can't honestly answer my feelings because I'm not connected with it. So I'd kind of say, you know what, just sell it. And there's other campsites that we can we can use. Um, but I know there's lots of connections with those people, so I'm really sorry. I don't really have an answer. Uh, Karen Blake is asking me, what's the most effective way to recruit leaders? Wow, <laughs> that's a, that's another vlog which I've done actually. Um, it's up here somewhere, I'll put a link. Um, lately what I've done is just gone straight from and said, you, I need you to help me because you've got, uh, you know, you're an accountant for example. So try and target the people that you know that have a Pacific skill for the job that you're trying to do so if you need a van driver try and find a dad that has his van or, or works for a freight haul company or something like that you know i've just said about um trying to find a, a treasurer trying to find an accountant uh so if there's specific roles that you're trying to fill then go direct okay so or hmm, you could do what i did uh, last year, for the last year, the last two years, we've had a family open day, all right? So the family open day, I've done a vlog about uh, recruiting leaders. Watch that because it goes in a bit more detail. But the family um, open day, we got each section to run some tasks. So the Beavers did some arts and crafts. Cubs done, uh, what do they do? Tent pitching, racing, and scouts. I run it doing some fire lighting, but showing parents that how they can use those fire lighting skills for barbecues and stuff. And then there we had our sneaky AGM. Shh. That was a little sneaky one, all right? Um, because I didn't tell the fam. Well, I did announce it in small print. Um, can you know what AGM is like? Hardly anyone ever taps up. So I did that. And at the end of it, I kind of just said, right, guys, I need your help. I really need your help. And what, what the, the cool thing doing it as a fa family open day is that the... The parents or the adults see how much fun as an adult, as a volunteer that I have and the rest of the leaders have, as you would know. And they're like, you know what? I want a bit of this fun. It looks fun. So just showing them it's not all about wearing a uniform and doing training and stuff. Yes, it is about that. But it's also about having fun for yourself, not just the young people. So to answer your question, show them what we do as scout leaders, you know all the amazing stuff that you do tell them about the trips that you've been on and and you know if you're lucky enough to do extra things like you know being in london i went to city of hall to have dinner with boris johnson how's a parliament tour there's loads of stuff that you could do as a scout leader extra that you wouldn't be able to do does that make sense if it doesn't watch the vlog uh, the link is up here about how to recruit leaders okay i hope that helps you um Karen, if not, drop me an email and um, I can go into a bit further. Um, Adam is asking a very controversial question, Adam, naughty boy. Um, is it possible or sensible to recruit new members while face-to-face -face scouting is not happening? Awesome question, Adam. Um, I've known some scout groups who've actually recruited leaders uh, via this medium of streaming. Um, because parents don't actually know what happens. In, in our nights, you know, they drop their kids off at Beavers or Cubs or Scouts or even Explorers, you know. I know Explorers come on their own, but parents don't actually see what goes on during those sessions. So having these streaming sessions that parents have been watching has given them a little insight of what we do during our Scout night. Okay, it's not the best, you know, it's not actually in the hall and camping and stuff, but it's just giving them that little insight. And those parents have actually gone, actually, this looks quite fun. I want to join in and I want to volunteer. And I've got some time 
to uh, to give up to to the local scout group. So I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a really good thing, and it's happened to my group. <laughs> um, we've got our treasurer sorted. Um, he drops them off on a Tuesday at seven o'clock, and that's it. Closes the the hut door, gets in his car, and drives home. Comes back two hours later. Never knew what was going on until the cub leader went to him and said, "You know, we need some help." Um, and invited them down, and, and he's been following us on on Zoom in the cups and, and worked out. Actually, it's quite fun. So he was there just like as an adult helper, but came back week after week after week. I reeled him in as the GSL. Boom, caught him. He's now the cub section leader. Ha ha. Thank you very much, Greg. Thank you, Greg. I owe you a beer <laughs> or a cup of tea. Um, so Adam, I don't think it's a bad idea. I think it's a really good idea that parents are seeing what we do um, in our section night on Zoom. Just gives them that, that little bit of insight. Ah, Scout Leo, thank you very much for your question. Strangest camping experience. I don't have strange camping experiences. I have uh, memories of funny things that have happened. Uh, like, I would just mention it about Long Ridge, my first ever campsite uh, camping experience. What was it, 14 years ago, 13, 14 years ago with a cub um sadly broke his arm because he ran over the guidelines trip broke his arm waving like that so my first ever camping trip i went off to the ambulance off to <laughs> local a and e busman's holiday um oh man what the other one oh, that was another one i can't talk about that one <laughs> no i can't talk about that one i tell you all right i tell you a confession um I go to a campsite not far from me, and it's great. It's a little woods with a little wooden hut. I love going there. Hedgley campsite, right? Beautiful campsite. Um, and you get the sole use of the camp. <laughs> I've never told anyone this. I'm now confessing to you. All right, so picture this. Everyone goes to bed. It's like, I don't know, one, two o'clock in the morning. I'm the last one up, um, and I'm heading off to bed. And I close the wooden hut door click oh, God. i realized that the door is now locked it's it's i thought it was on the latch but it wasn't and all the keys are inside locked inside it right so i'm like i am now crapping myself thinking what am i going to do how am i going to get out of there we can't get in uh the toilets are in there the food everything is in there um so i blamed a scout Blamed a scout. I got the other uh, cut, uh, the scout leader to come and help me. We creep into the uh, to the hut, and all the doors are locked. There's window bars. There's no way we're getting in there. And I tell her that um, the uh, name the scout. He's come along, gone to the toilet, midnight toilet, locked the door. It's one inside there. We're now working out how we're going to get inside there. We're going to have to smash one of the windows. There's no way of kicking the door down, and it's all secure. One of my scouts, um, oh, he's a young leader, he works out that on the window, uh, the, the, the frame, the security frame, there's a loose bolt. So we managed to prise that bolt off, security bar comes down, we send a smaller scout through the window. No, in fact, it was a scout leader, that was it. She went in through the window and unlocked the hatch. Um, and to this day, I've never told anyone that was me that closed the door. I always blame the scout. Confession. Shh, guys, you're not telling anybody, particularly my scout leader. That's a confession between me and you, all right? Uh, Cameron's asking, what would be your biggest regret or accomplishment? Accomplishment? Accomplishment. Can't say that word. Uh, Cameron, um, let's talk about the biggest accomplishment is this bad boy here. Can you see that? That's my wood badge. That would be my probably biggest... Um, Big, biggest thing that I've ever done in scouting is get my wood, wood badge and then followed by the commission's accommodation and the award for merit for the stuff I've done during COVID online for the Scout Association. So my biggest accomplishment is the wood badge. My biggest regret is not doing scouting as a young person. I did scouts, when, in fact I did beavers for two weeks, um, I think I was five or six, something like that. My mum said I hated it, I cried, I never went back. Um, and that was it for scouting until I rejoined as an adult, you know, uh, in my in my mid thirties. So my biggest regret is not doing scouting during my my younger days and going on to get the Queen Scout Award. And I see, you know, 
people who have the Queen Scout belt and the award and they go off to Buck Palace and they're doing stuff at Windsor Castle and the Cenotaph. I'm really jealous by that. So that would be one of my biggest regrets. But I don't have regrets in life, to be honest, Cameron. Um, I did other things in my youth. I was St. John's Ambulance. I got the highest award in St. John's Ambulance called the... Um, God, what is it called? Grand Prior. That's the biggest award. God, I couldn't remember. Um, so it's a bit like getting the Queen Scout Award for, scout, uh, for yeah, scouting. Um, and my, my experience from St. John's Ambulance led on to the job that I do now in the hospital. So there's always reasons for things happening. I'm a great believer in things happen for a reason. Um, but why didn't I do my scouting? I don't know. It would have been cool to be a scout, or a Beaver Cup scout, explorer, young leader, um, but it is what it is, Cameron, and I don't think, personally, you should have any regrets in life. Things happen for a reason. Um, yeah, I think, I think, hopefully that answers your, your question, Cameron. All 13 CR055, awesome name. Um, they're asking me, if I could start again and weren't doing the job that I'm doing now, what would you do? Um, uh, so I had two jobs I really wanted to do as a kid. I was lucky enough um, when I was 10 ish um that i knew i was going to work in a hospital okay i planned to be a paramedic but as i got older I, I i found out that the salary for a paramedic isn't that good um you're you're out and you get beaten up quite a bit which is the truth um and i fell into the role uh that i'm doing in anesthetics by accident okay so um but the other job i i always wanted to do um as a kid was I'd always record the radio just like you uh you know the top 10 the, the top 40 UK hits and um I would pretend to be on radio yeah and I remember during the summer radio one would have the road show down by the seaside um and I would open my bedroom window and I would broadcast live playing those tunes pretending I was you know who was I going to be uh Pat Sharp was my biggest radio DJ fan I was huge of Pat Sharp and I would pretend I was him then, from the hospital, I fell into hospital radio. Um, long story about that. And I and I worked on radio full time for, for what are we talking about? 10, 15 years. I worked on some big stations. I worked on Heart. I worked on Capital. Uh, I've done loads and loads of stuff. Smaller stations where I live, uh, stuff in Wembley in London. And I'm still kind of connected a little bit to radio. And I was working radio full time. So I was working. Uh, in the hospital during the day and my radio would be um nine to one o'clock or was it ten to one something like that. i can't remember at night time and i did that for many many years and i loved being a radio so if i wasn't doing the job that i'm doing now in the hospital i'd go back on radio without a shadow of a doubt and the reason i stopped radio one because i was so knackered working in the hospital during the day and and radio at night time is radio isn't the best money Okay, you, you'll think everyone on radio gets paid lots, but it's the top owners, the people who work right at the top at heart, capital, radio one, they're the ones that earn the big bucks. Um, yeah, kind of just fell out in love. When you, it's that thing of when you take a hobby into a full-time job, it starts turning into a job. It's not fun, it's not a hobby. Does that kind of make sense for you guys, you know? So to answer your question, I would definitely go back being... Uh, being back on the radio I miss those days uh right so dinosaur what's the best kind of tea uh we answered that one haven't we um favorite out of scout activities favorite out of scout activities uh so uh, i'm guessing dinosaur that means what do i like to do when i'm not scouting uh, my family i love love spending time with my family um and we do different things my my wife's Loves baking, so we do quite a lot of cooking at the weekends. Um, my my son has re uh, found the love of drawing. I, I used to do it as a kid. We used to just uh, doodle and make funny cartoons and stuff up. Um, and he's found that, so I'm kind of doing some drawing with him. Uh, with Grace, uh, we'll just play and make things. Bit of gardening. Um, love spending some time in the outdoors, just going for walks and stuff. So. For me, it's about quality time with my family and just doing, spending time with them, you know. Well, guys, thank you very much. 
big thank you to you on camera too. I <laughs> hope this is working with these two cameras. Let me know um, if you like this kind of two-way camera. I don't know, I'm just, just experimenting, doing a bit of Q&A session with you guys, yeah? So guys, thank you very much um, for sending in those questions and answers. If you have a question that I haven't answered, or this vlog has inspired you to send me a question, send me an email, comment below. There's many ways to contact me here on Big Man in the Woods on the social media pages. Send me a question and, and I'll answer it, either by video or email, Facebook, whatever. Okay, so if there's a question, it's never a silly question. But once again, thank you very much for subscribing to Big Man in the Woods. Don't forget, click the notification bell and watch this playlist here for some other Scout-related videos. Till next time, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.